Okay, so yep, we are waiting my uh, friend's mom's funeral process to be f- completed. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, um, letting go. I want to read this chapter five. Grief, page seventy-two. Grief is an experience common to us all. In grief, we feel that things are too difficult. We'll never make it. We're unloving and unlovable. We have thoughts such as, "All the years I've wasted." It is a feeling of sadness and loss, loneliness, the feeling of if only, regret, feelings of abandonment, pain, helplessness, and hopelessness, nostalgia, melancholy. Depression, longing, irretrievable loss, heartbrokenness, anguish, disappointment, pessimism. Grief can be pre- precipitated by the loss of a belief system, a relationship, a capacity or earl, or hope about ourselves, or an overall attitude toward our life, external circumstances, or institutions. It's the feeling. I will never get over this. This one is too difficult. I tried, but nothing helps. There is a feeling of vulnerability to pain and suffering, and so we see a great deal of it in the external world to reinforce and justify our own inner feeling. There is a crying for someone to help because we can't do anything about it, and we feel that maybe someone else can do it for us. This is in contra, contra. Distinction to apathy, where there is a feeling that no one can help. Allowing the grief, most of us carry a great deal of suppressed grief. Men especially are prone to hide that particular feeling, as it is considered unmanly and unmasculine to cry. Most people are afraid of the amount of grief they have suppressed. They are terrified that they will be swamped and overwhelmed by it. People will say, "If I were ever to start crying, I would never stop." There is so much grief in the world, grief in my life, grief in my family and friends. Oh, the untold tragedies of life, all of disappointments and smashed hopes. Suppressed grief is responsible for many psychosomatic conditions and health-related complaints. Instead of suppressing the feeling. If it is allowed to come up and be relinquished, we can quickly jump from grief to acceptance. The continuing grief over a loss is due to the resistance to accepting that state and allowing the grief to expand itself. The persistence of a feeling is due to the resistance to allowing it to be relinquished. Example: Cry me a river. Once we accept the fact that we can't handle the grief. We can already up into pride. The feeling of "I can do it" and "I can handle it" bring us to courage. With the courage to face our inner feelings and let them go, we thus move on to the levels of acceptance and eventually peace. When we let go of a lot of grief we have been holding over the years, our friends and family will notice a change in our facial expression. Our step will be lighter and we will look younger. Grief is time limited. This fact gives us the courage and willingness to face grief. If we don't resist the feeling of grief and totally surrender to it, it will run out in about ten to twenty minutes. Then it will stop for variable lengths of time. If we keep surrendering to it every time it comes up, then it will be eventually run out. We just allow ourselves to experience it fully. We only have to tolerate an overwhelming grief for 10 to 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden it will disappear. If we resist the grief, then it will go on and on. Suppressed grief can go on for years. In facing grief, we often have to acknowledge and let go of our shame and embarrassment about having the feeling in the first place. For men, this is especially so. We have to relinquish our fear of the feeling and our fear of being swamped and overwhelmed by it. It helps to realize that letting go of the resistance to the feeling moves us quickly through it. Traditionally, 
Women have said out of their own experience and wisdom, "A good cry makes me feel better." Many a man has been surprised surprised when he learned the truth of this. Experientially, there was a surprise, the surprising and almost immediate relief from a pounding headache, as soon as the grief about a past situation was allowed to come up. As the grief surfaced, there was the sentence: "Men don't cry." After letting go of the masculine pride about crying, then up came a fear that the crying would never stop once it was allowed to start. As soon as that fear was gone, then there was anger. It was anger at a society that forces men to suppress their feelings, and anger at the notion that men are not even supposed to have feelings. With the letting go of that anger, the level of courage was reached, and then the needed crying could be allowed. Not only was there relief from the headache, but when the torrent of sobs subsided, a profound peacefulness settled. Henceforth, the subject did not have to be avoided. Once a man has fully let the grief come up and totally freed himself from that suppressed energy, he is peaceful and his view of his own masculinity changes. He realizes that his masculinity is now more complete. He is just as much of a man, but now he is a man who can also be in touch with and handle his own feelings. Consequently, he is more adequate, more capable, more well-rounded, more understanding, more nate, more mature, more capable of relating to and understanding others, more compassionate and more loving. The psychological law, the psychological basis of all grief and mourning is attachment. Attachment and dependence occur because we feel incomplete within ourselves. Therefore, we seek objects, people, relationships, places, and concepts to fulfill inner needs, because they are unconsciously utilized to fulfill an inner need. They come to be identified as mine. As more energy is poured into them, there is a transition from identifying with the external objects as mine to being an actual extension of me. Loss of the objects, loss of the object, loss of the object or person is experienced as a loss of our own self, and an important part of our emotional economy. Loss is experienced as a diminution of the quality of ourselves, which the object or person represented. The more emotional energy invested in object or person. The greater will be the feeling of loss, and the greater the pain associated with undoing of the bonds of dependence. Attachment creates a dependency, and dependency, because of its nature, intrinsically carries with it a fear of loss. Within each person, there is the child, parent, and adult. When grief comes up, it is rewarding to ask, within myself, is it the child, parent, or adult that is the source of this feeling? For example, the child within a person is scared that something will happen to a beloved dog. It wonders how will I make it. The inner adult also feels grief, but the adult accepts the inevitable. In, but the adult accepts the inevitable. The little kitty or doggy is not immortal. The adult in us regretfully accepts that impermanence, impermanency is the reality of life. We accept that our youth is not permanent, that many romantic relationships are not lifelong, and that our dog will one day die. Well said, well written. I definitely experienced this、uh, change、um, in recent years. Like yesterday, when I was at the funeral,、um, yeah, when I. Was there standing, looking at my friends and all the families, relatives, friends, visiting、um, his mom for the last time? I, 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 I just that emotion just welled up and I, I cried. I cried for like, yeah, a long time.、Um, I let myself cry in public. I, I think it, it's not, it's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing at all. Often we just got this belief that men don't cry, and 
I think that that's not healthy. When you have emotions, when you have grief, then you need to allow yourself to express it. Yeah, not in words, but through crying. Okay, I think it's almost done. It's um, seven forty-nine. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay. I wish you good health. I wish you family healthy. Live long life. And rest in peace to my friend's mom. <laughs>